All right, guys. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Day, and I am the founder of Cyborg Academy. And today's session is just going to be um, a really quick session. We're gonna be um just going over some really quick tips um for uh, a solid resume for cybersecurity internships and entry level jobs. Um, so I know like how it is like you know writing resumes like especially if you're not you're not really like um you've not really had that much experience in the field. Like kind of put in everything you know about you that makes you qualify for a job or entry level position, um, and consolidating it into a resume. Sometimes it's not really um, the most easy thing to do, especially because you, you don't know what you don't know. So um, this is just gonna uh, we're just gonna go over this resume, um, and just kind of go over certain things you know for like junior level positions, uh, entry level positions, uh, uh, cybersecurity internships and stuff like that. Um, I actually got this resume from John Stoner. So John Stoner is a he is a cybersecurity professional at, um, I believe, Booz Allen Hamilton, I think. But yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. Um, he gave me this resume template um, last year um, when we had like some kind of uh, meeting or something. But this is a really great resume template. Um, my resume template right now is actually a uh, a a different version of this. It's it, it's it, it was from this. Um, I kind of tweaked it here and there to make my own resume. But um, we're just gonna be using this resume template. Um, to kind of go over those things that are going to, you know, be important for your resume, um, especially if you're applying for entry level or cybersecurity internships. And I will make this um, link available to everyone, um, you know, to view. You can download it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so you can download this resume as a doc uh, in doc format and then, you know, edit it and you just make it personal, personalize it to your own um, personal experience and, and skills and everything. But let's just get started. And I will just go over it. Um, like section by section so you know from here all the way uh down so um but exactly i mean what exactly is a resume i mean it, i'm pretty sure everybody know here knows what a resume is like the resume is literally a consolidated version of your professional experience so if you are trying to sell yourself for a position um you're trying to let um, a recruiter or a hiring manager uh know everything about you that qualifies you for a position your resume is that ticket, so it's your ticket to uh, it's a ticket of entry to the job position you are trying to apply for or you're trying to get. So um, it has to, you know, if you're trying to, if you have a ticket, um, the ticket has to uh, match certain information for you to be able to have entry into, you know, maybe a show or a game or anything like that. So this resume is your ticket to your interview or um, yeah, your your interview because it's not necessarily a ticket to the job, but it's your ticket to the interview because if they see that you have enough qualifications to possibly do the job then they will call you in for an interview so your resume is pretty much your ticket for the interview and you really want this ticket to um to put you in the best light right um because if this uh ticket does not show everything that makes you qualify for the position you're probably not even going to get an interview so the goal is always to you know have that resume that solid and strong resume that is going to eventually get you that interview and then you can work your way through the interview in order to eventually get the position so um uh, just uh, let's just start from the top. So, of course, important details: your name, um, full name, um, and um, with names, uh, it, it really varies. Um, I mean, if you have a simple name like, uh, you know, whatever name, just like totally fine to put it there. If you have a preferred name, um, I usually recommend putting that, put in your full name, and then put in that preferred name in you know bracket so that. Um, especially if your name is like something that's not really easy to pronounce. I know everybody says, oh, you know, make them pronounce your names. I personally think, you know, I just want to get through that part of the interview um, fast because like sometimes when you start an interview and the interview is like, interview is just like, you know, struggling to pronounce your name, um, it, it kind of throws them off a lot. So I just put a name that's easier for them to pronounce and just get over it with it. So um, that's just my recommendation. Um, you can definitely put, uh, you know, whatever uh, name you're comfortable with on as, as your name on here. Um, and yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Then your email. So uh, you definitely want to have a professional kind of email. Um, nothing too fancy. Some people say, you know, get a domain or whatever. So it's like something at uh, a sp like a specific domain, maybe like say, my name is Day. So I could say day at, you know, resume.com or something like that. Honestly, a Gmail will be fine. So we would say um, use pro pro Proton Mail because it's secure. Um, if you want to do that, that's fine. I personally don't think it really, really, uh, uh, it's, it's all personal preference, um, but a, a, a professional email is, is going to be great. Um, definitely don't want to have um, the email you used back in high school, you know, that has, you know, funny names. So definitely something that is professional um, and, you know, is, you know, it's appealing to the eyes. You don't want something that's just going to, you know, look really off um, 
on your resume and then of course your linkedin profile so you definitely need to have a linkedin profile um if you're in cybersecurity or if you're any kind of professional um your linkedin profile is is, is, is it's essential, essentially your your professional social network so definitely have a linkedin profile and, and customize your linkedin uh link um in a way that it is um uh, consolidated because you know LinkedIn gives you these generic links that are super long but you can um, edit the link and make it a lot more uh, consolidated so definitely do that and you really don't have to put in your full physical or mailing address you just need to have uh, your city uh, and state um, because um, number one I mean like uh, recently i mean most positions are remote and if they're going to ask for your address they're going to ask if ask you for it in the application so that's just going to take in so much space so i usually just leave it to the city and the state so you know uh dallas texas right just dallas comma tx that's all that's all i put there um because you don't really you don't really have to put you know the, the full your full your full address all right phone number of course you have to put your phone number um use you know the regular phone number convention so for example uh let's say like your virgin your oh, i can't edit it but like you know use the brackets and the, the dashes and the lines to segment of your phone number so it's easy to to read and next uh we here we have the career overview some people call it professional summary so we'll call it some summaries so we'll call it objective it's just pretty much like a really quick summary of you know who you are and you know essentially like you know what you're looking for anything like that so here it says i'm a recent graduate from the university of blah 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 with a degree in this looking for an entry position in a SOC uh, or as a cybersecurity analyst. I'm a member of this club and in this chapter, I recently attended this conference. My areas of interest include log analysis, participating in CTFs and volunteering with such and such. I'm open to relocation, shift work or remote work. If applicable, add security, security uh, clearance information. So um, this was, you know, quite a uh, pretty um, uh, straight on, straightforward summary. I usually try to leave mine to like maximum of three or four lines um just like a slow day uh you know it's a it's a point where a, a recruiter can just glance over it and have a really um uh quick summary of who i am or i just don't have it i just don't put it in my resume right now i don't have a summary on my resume um maybe when i'm like reviewing or anything i might just put a summary on there but i personally don't however if you're like you know just trying to get that first position you might have want to put like some things that are interesting about you um that really will catch the eye of whoever is going to be looking at your resume all right, so uh, formal education or education, um, here is where you put your degree. So uh, associate's degree, bachelor's degrees. Um, if you're applying for internships, I, I don't think you should have your high school um, your high school name on here. Just leave it as your current college or attending. And that was a mistake I used to make back um, when I was still applying for internships. So only um, uh, if you're, you know, in that shoes, probably like, you know, starting off college, um, you know, first year or whatever, just leave it as your the current uh, university you're going to or college you're going to. And, um, you know, of course, put in your university name and your major. And also, if your GPA is above a 3.0, you know, definitely put it there. I don't put my GPA in my on my resume anytime, uh, anymore. I used to in the past uh, because it was great. Um, it was like a 3.8. So I was like, of course, I put it on there, and I was also applying for internships, so I'll leave it on there, but now I don't really um, put it on my resume anymore. However, if you're applying for internships, a lot of times they're usually requiring that you have a 3.0 GPA and above, so you definitely might want to put it on there. Or if you're a new grad, um, it's also something you might want to leave out there if it is above a 3.0. Um, yes, definitely uh, uh, keep that in mind. And then relevant coursework. So of course, um, if you are like an IT or cybersecurity major, you definitely have taken courses that are related to cybersecurity. So just want to list like the ones that are uh, important to the particular kind of positions you're applying for. So for example, let's say you took a government class that is not important to the position you're applying for. So you want to limit it to uh, ethical hacking classes, network forensic classes, pen testing classes, uh, Python classes, security related classes, right? That's pretty straightforward. And then certifications. Um, I always recommend um, um, certifications are at the top of your resume with you know education because um, that's a lot of things. That's one thing that employers like to, uh, usually look up for or, or recruiters. Recruiters um, are are really really big on certifications. Um, they like seeing people with certifications. So definitely have it um, somewhere uh, uh, earlier in your resume, um, especially as you know your CompTIA Security Plus, your CompTIA SISA Plus, and all those other you know fun and great certifications. Um, I don't usually put the year of the certifications. Um, my certifications are all still uh recent so i don't um they're not like expired or anything but also i also do not put 
the uh, the number and the date i just put CompTIA security plus CompTIA network plus CompTIA size plus on there um helps me save space um and if they require uh that i you know provide information about certification i can always share that information so i just think you should just leave it to you know just the name of the certification and um about like um other certifications like cyber certifications or um uh you know udemy certifications i personally d wouldn't recommend that um i would rather put those in like professional development i would want to leave this uh certifications for specifically industry recognized certifications so you know your company certifications um your offensive security certifications e-learning security certifications um security Bluetooth certifications those are the ones i usually would like to leave on there so that's my recommendation um of course you can really do whatever you want but i just recommend putting only the industry recognized certifications all right professional de uh, development uh, this is also one that um i uh, think it's really important to have um i usually i think this is also great to have um up top um I, I have mine like all the way at the bottom because i like to favor my experience more than other things i'm doing um but um of course you want to have you know your home lab a home lab is i think it's very 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 important um if you're in cybersecurity. um uh yes there will, there will be a recording of the session after uh, i'm currently recording so yeah there will be a recording of the session um, i'll have it on, on youtube um before the end hopefully by, uh, by the end of the week so yeah there'll be a recording so for professional development um yeah of course your home lab i you know of course definitely definitely have a home lab um you know you want to uh, be able to show that you have um skills in certain things uh you've used certain tools so i usually have my home lab listed as home lab consistent of splunk uh, security onion kali linux um this and that um there was a time i did a linux project so i put linux project consistent of you know building a um a, a lamp stack um configuring web, web applications and different things like that so if you have different projects you're doing like that definitely list them on there and also if you have like a link to like uh, a YouTube video you did about them or a blog you did about them definitely definitely link it with uh, with it because um, it, it's to show that you have done this and you have uh, evidence and proof of it um, that you can you know the, the the hiring manager or recruiter can click this link and see what you've done so that's why I always um say you know always document what you're doing right document it on a blog on a vlog so you can always show it um to anyone who might want to see what you're talking about because you can say oh i have a home lab with this but you really can't point to you know what you did in that home lab or um you know what's like that home lab consists of for example i was in a um, interview scenario like a couple of months ago and I, I said i have a home lab with this and this and that and you're like okay um you know like you know what it, what is your, what does your home lab consist of and stuff like that so i was like oh in my resume um at the bottom there is a link to the documentation for my home lab you can check it out and you will see everything there and they were op able to open um, my the link to the home lab and look at everything that it was co uh, it consist consisted of so that is a really really great way to um one to steer the interview in the direction that favor favors you because they will want to talk about that they won't talk about you know how did you do that you know um you know what what what, what, what were different processes you went through uh when you were going doing this home lab or you know uh, why do you find this tool interesting right you, this is something that you have done and you are really good at or you know you have some knowledge of so it's something you can confidently talk about so that's one thing it can help you with. It can help you steer the interview in your own favor, and you know, of course, show that you definitely do have knowledge um, about these these tools. All right, so um, here we have on proficient with Wireshark. Um, yes, the session was recorded. Let me just put it in the chat. The session will be recorded. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so um yeah i was saying proficient with wireshark um of course if you've used like certain tools um i guess um that you've learned about um, or you're pretty sure you're really good at you might want to put them on there um i at the same time if you have documentation for that definitely put it on there so for example if you went through like a wireshark scenario where you were analyzing a pcap and you put it on a blog link it up there um other things um you want to link up here um you want to link uh you want to put like you know communities you're part of right uh you have uh attends um isa chapters meetings this is information uh, system security association um you are a member of cyber's academy you attended a defcon conference uh you're a volunteer at your local high school um and stuff like that right 
so different different things like that for example uh also like instead of having this cyber security um what's it called this um cyber certification here you can put it on here you can say a uh, completed cyber security uh, uh cyber certification consistent of learning about different uh uh security skills from threat intelligence security monitoring log aggregation th different things like that so um this is definitely a place to fill in those different things you're doing um that um contribute to your professional development all right so now this is really the main thing career experience so of course i know that if you're probably applying for a um a entry-level position you might not have any um, related experience uh, or you might not have that much experience um, also one tip i usually recommend is trying to consolidate this into one page especially if you don't have that much experience because you don't want it to look like you are just like putting in buzzwords you know here and there just trying to fill up um, your resume with you know just to look like you really know so try to consolidate it into one page if it means like you know making this the font smaller and limit it into specific things that really really show your skill set um that's my recommendation and then as you advance you know as you start getting like six months you know one year one year of experience and you need more space definitely can expand it to two pages three pages whatever you want to do but if you're just starting off try to consolidate it to um one page and only put out this um, important things that are really going to help you um, with the job so career experience so um, let's say, for example, you know, in the past you have uh, worked um, in cybersecurity. Let's say you had an internship, or let's say you had some IT-related positions, um, or whatever. Um, that's that's the first scenario, right? You've you, you've worked in the field, you have the experience. Um, maybe not specifically cybersecurity experience, but it's you know IT-related, it's tech-related. Definitely put it on there. So we put in uh, the title of your job, name of your company, um, and the state. Um, I usually just I don't think I have the state listed on mine i just put um the title of the job and the name of the company and um, remote that's that's all i put there but if you want to you can put you know for example if you're in dallas you can just put comma dallas comma uh, texas um but i don't really think it's that important to put it in there um however you can do that if you want to and then you and then the the date of the the job position you held so i usually just leave it to months so for example if i started a position in january I'll put January 2021 to uh, December 2021, um, or if you're still at a position, January 2021 to present. And now, if we're going to go deeper into how to, um, you know, write your resume, like how to list out your experience and the things you did in your uh, positions, that is like a whole different ball game. But these are like some really, um, uh. Uh, tips to uh, good tips to keep in mind so keep the bullets to one line um it needs to be easy to scan um of course there are exceptions you might have like you know longer words um or longer uh sentences but try to keep it to one line maybe max of two lines um also where applicable use verbiage and language from the job openings or requirements or at least similar jobs so what what they're what um john is essentially trying to say here is that if there are particular um, words that are that are used in the job description that you're trying to um, you're you're applying to, um, and you fit those uh, you know requirements, of course try to put those words in your resume. Like uh, when you're tailoring your resume towards that particular uh, job position. So if you know you've used a tool, but you have it worded differently in your resume, and like oh I actually have experience with this, I have worked with this, I just worded it different in my resume. Then of course take it from that job um, requirement and put it in a resume like that because um, that way you know whatever they're using to scan for resumes, it could you know be that thing that might hit for you because uh, you specifically used words that it described specifically in the job opening and requirements, but. Uh, try as much as, as possible to own, to use these for things that you're definitely confident in and you're sure of um and you know uh not just because they have it on the job requirement and then you just might me plug it into your resume um they're gonna grill you on that and if you don't know how to do how to do that stuff then that just like you know ru ruined your chances um, of the job so try to be specific with uh try to be specific where applicable especially for technical points so of course um this is cyber security so we want to like uh as much as possible we want to like give um uh uh really direct details of what we did at, at the same time you know ensuring confidentiality you're not going to be telling them you know this is you know this is what i you did in my job you know or whatever like these are the vulnerabilities we had or whatever but you want to like be specific about what you know certain things that you did um certain technical things that you did at your job 
um, that you know will definitely make you look like you definitely would know what you're doing and you qualify for that position. And uh, something to keep in mind is: Would a recruiter or hiring manager know if you're fit for the job or understand your skills and abilities? So, is your are your, is your experience um, portraying you in such a way that the hiring manager or recruiter would know that this person is definitely a, a good fit for this job or um, has the skills and abilities required for this position? So. Um, that's this is just like kind of talking over uh, the situation whereby you are uh, you have previous experience you've worked in IT in the past uh, or cybersecurity in the past and you know you're you're you know uh, trying to look for a new opportunity or whatever. However, I know there are people out there who do not have any form of cybersecurity experience. I've never worked in IT in the past. So how do you feel in this career experience? Right. A lot of times I see people that have a lot of um they put a lot of jobs. Um, that are not related to cybersecurity that they have held in the past, um, just in like to feel a career experience um, position. I personally think you can just list those jobs and list single bullet points for those jobs. Which now you want to in this part, you now want to start highlighting more things you're doing uh, for professional development, right? Because those reverse jobs not necessarily like apply to cybersecurity you know of course they want sometimes companies say oh we we also like experience from different um fields or whatever but at the same time you you um you're 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 wanting to capitalize on other things that you are doing to improve your skills um to get you that job especially if you don't have that previous experience so um here you can add more things like labs you're doing so range force try hack me hack the box ctfs um community events you're being part of volunteer things you're doing just populated with things that you are constantly doing to improve yourself. Um, you can have a more, um, a more uh, um, in-depth professional development um, um, section um, than career experience. If that is kind of the category that you f- you fit in, um, especially if you're you know coming from a non uh, cybersecurity background. So definitely highlight the cybersecurity things that show that you are putting in the time and effort to improve your skills, um, and especially you know. Uh, like I said, if you're not coming from a cybersecurity background. So last um, portion is the references. So this one is uh, kind of uh, for me. I don't I've never really had to put re- references on my resume. Um, uh, I there's some companies really have ha- asked for references at the end of the interview process when they're trying to like extend an offer. Um, so this is just all preference pre- preference based so if you feel like you have references or you have references that are readily available um to you know have them on your resume and you know certainly go ahead if you don't that's totally fine you can just leave your resume you know how it is um in a consolidated version with all of the things that need to show that you are um you know qualified for that entry level position that cybersecurity internship and you know eventually help you get that interview because this resume is your ticket for the interview. So, like I said, uh, today's session was not gonna be too long, but that's you know essentially everything I wanted to cover. Um, I would, I, w- I will, I will share the link of this resume um, right after we're done, so you can, you guys can download it and you know, uh, uh, tailor it to your own specific experience. And of course, you can drop that when you've when you've tailored it, definitely drop it in the resume review channel and you know we'll give you tips on you know what you can improve um and you know how you can adjust your resume to fit your skills and to also fit the positions you might want to apply for in the future so that brings us to the end of this session does anyone have any questions uh they wanted to ask in regards to resume building um applying for entry-level jobs and things of that nature Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Do you have uh, anything more?
Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, gratefully, you have that IT support role. So, what you want to do is uh, capitalize on that role in the sense that you want to look at the things you do on a day-to-day basis that have um, some sort of cybersecurity embedded in them. Now, number one thing um, I, I don't you know recommend is lying on your resume. However, there are certain things you might be doing in your role that have some sort of um, um, direct um, conversion to cybersecurity type positions, right? So, for example, if you're doing anything with, you know, Active Directory, um, managing users, managing um, organizational units and all that stuff, try to find what uh, what specific job functions do you perform that have some, sor- some sort of cybersecurity, uh, you know, related, related function um, that, you know, p- could potentially apply to jobs you might want to apply to in the future so that's one thing that it support role that's one you, since you have that it um um specific um experience try to find those uh, specific things that you know can transfer to uh cybersecurity related positions and then for the rest of your 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 you know your jobs of course you don't want to just like look like oh you just started working recently or something i mean you could you could uh you could potentially leave out all of your other non-it related positions and not even put them on your resume and just have your it support position as your only experience on your resume and just list out the different things you do um, and stuff like that or you can have those other experiences but just like put put the things you did there in you know really short lines or um like paragraphs um and just list them out um there as well but of course your it support role should be number one on the top with very very um specific details um use like keywords um that um uh, of tools or processes you're part of um or skills that you are or, or abilities that you have from that position that in one way or the other relate to cybersecurity positions and how, how can you find those things that relate to cybersecurity positions you you look at the different job descriptions of positions you want to apply to so security engineer positions uh security analyst positions and look at those um job descriptions and look at what 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 do I do in my in my job that one way or the other relates to this, and try to like you know re reword it and uh have like here it says on where it says uh, uh use uh, where applicable use verbiage and language from the job openings or requirements or at least similar jobs okay so that's kind of what you want to do once again um uh not not uh uh do not lie on the resume but try to find the specific things in your job function that directly relate to some sort of cybersecurity function. I hope that answers your question. No problems. Anyone have any, anyone else have any more questions, um, comments, concerns, um, regards to resumes, uh, applying to jobs, and things of that sort. Uh, so you can once you once you uh, have your resume done, uh, you can drop them in the resume help channel. I just put it in the um, general chat. So that channel you can put your resume in there, and we'll give you suggestions on how to improve your resume. Uh, anyone else with with questions? All right. Uh, looks like no one else had any questions. So, like I said, I will share this template with you guys. Matter of fact, let me uh, send it to. Let me put it in the general chat. Actually, I'll put it in the resume help chat and then pin it there, so everyone can have access to it. And pin. All right, so I just put it in the resume help channel and pinned it there. So, you know, you guys can get it there, download it, and, you know, once you've uh, edited, edited it to your uh, 
specific uh to yourself for yourself then you know drop it there um and ask you know we will do our best to give you recommendations and things you can improve and stuff like that Uh, I mean, if you're dropping it in the resume help cha uh, channel, you can have whatever version you want to put on there. It's totally fine. Um, of course, try to make it redacted. Um, if you have like some sensitive information on there, you don't want to share with everyone. Uh, you can you know block it out or something. Uh, but whatever version is fine. Also, I, I one thing I left out is um um I usually recommend having your resume submitted in a docx format um for uh, positions if you if you're having to submit your resume to you know an ats system i usually recommend the docx format because sometimes when you have you know fancy stuff in your resume um you the pdf version kind of messes it up um however the docx format usually keeps the same format um all through the resume so um definitely try to have versions of your resume that you know, if recruiter asks for it, you can, you know, submit it. You can give it, you can send it to them by email. A PDF will be fine. A DocX will be fine. But specifically for applying for jobs online that require you to submit your resume, definitely, definitely try to use a DocX format. Okay. So once again, um, for... I end the session. Did anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, I'd say like you know, depends on like what you're volunteering for. So. In like if it's like cybersecurity related clubs, um, stuff like that, you know, of course you want to put it on there. Um, oh, oh, however, however, um, I still think you should still have a home lab, no matter how small or how simple it is. If it's just like a Kali machine and a metal spawnable machine, I still think that counts as a, as a home lab, um, because employers will definitely, most likely, eighty to ninety percent of the time will ask about it. But still, your volunteer experience, if it's like cybersecurity related. Um, definitely counts. Um, you know, if you're in you know any cybersecurity club, you perform a, a particular function, uh, put it on there in your professional development section. All right, no problems. Uh, okay, can you say that one more time? Mm hmm yeah 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 i mean if like you were doing try hack me and hack the box i mean that definitely that that works um if that is your, like your you know i guess replacement for a home lab um i think it's fine um i mean like you can put your rank, um, your details, your profile details on there. Um, I think that's fine as well. I would still have a home lab regardless. Even if it's just like disposable, you know, something that you just built once um, and you uh, uh, completely just tore down later on, it's totally fine. Um, but I guess like try hack me, don't try hack me and hack the box stuff. It's, you know, uh, good and all. Just put, you know, try hack me, hack the box. Learning about different penetration testing skills or uh, security uh, vulnerability assessment skills or uh, blue team skills, whatever it is you're learning to try hack me or hack the box. Just don't just put try hack me or hack the box or your rank or anything like that. Put some specific details or points about what you're learning from those platforms. All right. Oh yeah, I got you. I mean, like, with for for building a lab, I I if you're if you have a laptop, even with this the you know weakest of um specifications, 
you can definitely like you know use VirtualBox. VirtualBox is free, and you know, like, just spin up something really small, or try to use Docker. Um, there are different ways you can do it. Um, I mean, I'm not like I I don't want to sound like a broken record of going over and over again about you must have a home lab. I mean, of course, I mean there are certain circumstances that might not make you able to do it, but if you can find a way to do it. Um, definitely definitely recommend it doing it i'm only saying it because i it, it, it has done wonders for me and i just think if people will just capitalize on it it's something that especially for like internships and um um entry-level positions is something that will go a long way because everybody knows home labs everybody knows cybersecurity home labs but not everybody knows try hack me or hack the box they have gotten a lot of notoriety to become a lot more popular but still a home lab will still always remain a, a, sta a staple in cybersecurity because they know it um and you know they might not know uh, hack the box or try hack me so that's just you know why i just keep um uh uh continuously hunkering down on how important the home lab is All right, so I will wait a couple more seconds for one more question. Um, if we don't have one more question, then uh, we'll go ahead and um, end tonight's, tonight's section. Anybody had? Uh, anybody has any more questions? Only once. Twice. All right, so thank you guys so much for coming to today's session. Um, I hope you guys gained a lot from this. Um, if you haven't checked out the resume, I have linked it in the resume help channel. So please utilize it. You know, it's free. Um, download it and edit it and, you know, utilize it to your own uh, advantage and, you know, drop your resume when you're done so we can give you tips on how to improve it. But once again, I hope you guys gained something from this session and I hope you guys have an awesome um, weekend and once again thank you guys for coming and i will see you guys in the next session have a good night uh no problem it's good night